so uh, one more time today is the 21st and this is looking a little complicated um, I'm running into more and more issues uh, little things break uh, fitment is, is being a little hard because I've modified so many things so I'm having issues with uh, fitments but uh, I got this I got this Hopefully I can get this whole thing um, situated. I am not able to do any more fabrication since everything's painted, since uh, the clear is already installed. I cannot cut or barely shave it, but I have to be very careful. Now with the, with the body and the rest of the stuff, I have to be so careful um, not to scratch it. I still have to wet sand it uh, with the whole 
twelve thousand range and all that stuff that uh, that um, that is out there, the the fine grit, just to get that beautiful polish. But that's before I even install it on the body. I cannot hold the body of the car, or once everything's assembled and start going at it, because I'll destroy everything. The engine, the lines, it's so so fragile. So I have to polish it before I even install it. So that stops me because I don't want to touch the body. I don't want to touch the clear. I want to give it good three days just to 100% complete the cure. So I'm going to be sitting on this thing for three, three days. So that adds up time and final assembly. So I'm going to try to work everything around the clear. Um, that's why I wanted to haul ass and, and, and get the clear done. But unfortunately, you know, there's only so much I can do. So um, we're going to go back to the, to the interior. I think uh, most of the stuff is done. It's just little details. I'm working on the engine right now with uh, wiring. Uh, like I said, I still have to do the, all the plumbing on the bottom. Uh, all the chassis lines running, the brake lines. Uh, the brake line because the rear suspension, well the front too, it's, it's dynamic, it goes up and down. So I have to figure out uh, to do hard lines and when, like, just like in real cars, where the suspension uh, creates a movement, those are soft lines. And then it, it goes back to hard lines. Uh, when we used to work on, on off-road cars, uh, off-road cars, like, just like low riders, like their tail, they have a lot of travel. So you have to be very strategic on when you have your soft line that can, that kind of like allows that travel to go back and forth and at the same time still create pressure on the, on the brakes. So those were braided lines that we were using. And here's another tip. Well, of course, in real cars, the, the longer the soft line is, the softer your, your uh, brakes will be. Uh, the reason why, because hard lines, when you apply pressure, the hard line will expand, but very, very microscopic amounts compared to a soft line. When you apply the brake and it creates pressure inside, the soft line will expand. So the more soft line you have, the more it will absorb the energy from the pedal. And instead of translating that energy from the pedal to the brakes, the soft line is actually absorbing that energy. So you're wasting energy on expanding a soft line and that energy is not being applied to the brakes so that's why you have softer brakes uh, the shorter that you can have your soft lines the better so the better braking power that you'll have that's uh, something I learned on racing so we're trying to bring all that stuff to to scale modeling you know to scale modeling concepts of course it's not going to be able to break or stop but you know those little details are uh, what makes a, a huge difference so uh, going back uh, to my time frame I am really really getting uh, anxious right now so there's a lot more work to do so let me go back to work on my shit okay all right you guys I'll keep you posted
the process of uh, polishing the windows. I have uh, some uh, specific uh, sandpaper. It goes all the way up to 10,000. And after that, you still have to kind of like uh, polish it with a polishing compound. I'm going to go with a Tamiya polishing compound. It's a little hard. It's very uh, tedious. You have to like go at it for hours and hours and hours. I've been cleaning this uh, windshield and it still looks uh, a little bit foggy. Another trick, um, there's that, uh, um, how is it called? Pledge. So pledge is this uh, chemical you use to shine floors. Apparently you like toss it or throw it on the floor and then you mop it and it, it, it brings, it restores the floor. So that's what you use on on clear parts and it keeps them like perfectly uh, clear. So for that, I'm almost there. Um, I have been working, this is the whole bottom of the car. So interior, dashboard's already installed. Uh, the engine, it's, uh, it's in there, it's secured, it's not going anywhere from now. The radiator, I have to still kind of like secure it, but I'm working with all the accessories around it. Um, this rear suspension, which is, was a, a real pain in the ass to install. And as I explained before, three sections of the suspension extend and then they compress. That's the only way to, to get the full movement from, from the rear suspension. Um, so on the bottom, I'm almost done. So like I said, the engine's already installed, the whole bottom section of the engine. The um, transmission and everything is secured. The drive shaft uh, extends and contracts whenever the suspension goes back and forth. The two mufflers, uh, including the whole exhaust system, uh, they're already also installed and they're uh, installed in a way that they clear the arms and the center um, drive shaft when it uh, compresses and it goes comes out. Uh, out of the chrome, all my artwork, it's already there. So it's pretty much done. Uh, now I have to go with uh, a little harder details that's gonna be the brake lines uh, it has to go around through through the whole system uh, like I was explaining previously uh, the brake line has to have hard lines where it meets the movable parts so I have to figure out how to bring it in and out in and out so the lines kind of like continue with the movement or they allow the movement to go up and down and then at the same time meet the two I did a uh, this brake conversion and this model kit by the way didn't come with a brake booster in order to run um, calipers or, or uh, that instead of uh, drums you need to have a uh, the, the brake booster so I did the brake booster conversion and I installed four disc brakes all the way around uh, which it will be an upgrade from the actual Catalina um, that's about it for now I am like I said, a little nervous. Um, I'm coming through all these. You can see the rear bumper is not even started. Uh, the rear bumper, my plan is to install it, but at the same time have some kind of like magnets on the back. That way the car can be displayed as an uh, upright position, as if it was hopping and uh, the whole car will be installed on the floor and so in its belly like this. So I have to figure out uh, the magnets on the back so it can stay glued to the floor. At the same time, you can undo it and the whole thing will collapse back in. So uh, I'll keep you guys uh, posted. It's uh, it's fun. I still have to figure out some some way, somehow to, to build a base. So last night um, I got home from, from work. I was working on the damn car and the rear end broke, the rear axle, one of the brackets that holds uh, one of the upper arms uh, has like a, like a fracture and as soon as you move the chassis up and down, not the chassis, the, the axle, the rear end, it, it moves with the whole thing. I was like, awesome. Uh, this is what I was mentioning before that uh, when you try to rush things right at the end, it's the 
is exactly when you cannot make any mistakes like this. I'm gonna have to kind of like fix it. Uh, well, I actually did a little bit of a mix of uh, the goo glue, which is a uh, sprue or plastic melted inside the Tamiya super thin or extra thin. And I also did tiny bits of uh, on the other side of the of the broken part. I did a JB weld, like a very tiny microscopic with a toothpick. I was kind of like shoving it in there, and I left it overnight. Um, I am sure that it's gonna be glued back again. Now, what I'm not sure if it's going to, because every time the axle goes up and down, that arm puts pressure on that bracket. So. Hopefully it will hold, and if not, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. Today is already the 25th. The show is literally around the corner and the car is not ready. I have to fix this stuff and I cannot continue working on other things like all the brake lines and all that stuff because I have to fix the axle first, so. I'm a little stressed out, um, still, I'm gonna have to go work on it, I've been going to sleep uh, pretty late, now I have to wake up early for work, so it's just those things, you know, but um, I'm gonna go home right now, I'm hungry, I'm tired, but I gotta hit that thing, if not, it's not gonna be ready, so I'll keep you posted guys, as soon as I get home, I kinda like show where the fracture was. Uh, I ended up retouching it with uh, other paint. Of course, I cannot airbrush that area anymore. So many things connected to that uh, portion of the axle. So it's fun, you know? <laughs> it's, it's fabrication. That's every time you modify or you heavily modify a kit, you run into shit like that. The problem is that you need time in order to fix it and make it look perfect. When, you, when you're running out of time, again, it's more prone to make mistakes and the mistakes are harder to fix. So we'll see what I can do. I'll show you guys when I get there and uh, we'll continue and I'll have you join me in this saga for completion. All right, you guys, peace out. Okay, you guys, here we have the, the rear end. As you can see that uh, ear, bracket is slightly different color so it's a little bit in this guys but you can see the crack right there and then the whole back side I had to rescribe but that what you're looking at is not plastic anymore it's a uh, JB weld I know it's a little camouflaged uh, but you can if you really pay attention you can still really see it so from the front also um, well, it's a little dark and it's hard to get in there uh, with the camera, but you can kind of like see around it, uh, the crack. So supposedly it should be dry by now. I'm going to give it a try. Um, hope I don't break it. And if I do, uh, there's going to be some changes for the show. <laughs> Hopefully not. I started doing the... Um, as you can see, the the brake lines, so soft lines where the where there's movement, and then hard lines on the rest. So I have to join a hard line from here all the way up to the other soft line, and then up on the uh, rear end up to each brake caliper. Okay, you guys, I'll keep you posted.
once the base is done, the car has to be able to be located on like a upright position as if it was hopping. And then you can dismount it, the whole thing, and then the car will be squatting all the way down. Um, I am debating how I'm going to work with the base. Maybe I will not have the base ready for GSL, but I will have the base ready for the next uh, scale model shows. Um, time will tell um, at the end what my decision is going to be, but so far uh, I got to finish the car, worry about finishing the car, and then I'll worry about, you know, the display, how it's going to be mounted and everything. But I think that if I worry about the base, I'm not going to be able to take the base or nor the car to the show. So that's going to suck. So um, I'll keep you guys posted and let's keep working. All right. All right. So this is what uh, we have. These are the, the door hinges. They're pretty big because the door is going to have to microscopically slide back and forth to create a perfect seal uh, all around the frame uh, inside the frame you can see here that I did also some artwork on the the side uh, of the door jam I still have to glue the seat I haven't glued the seat because I have to do the inner panels the inner door cards so I have to do the door first and then line up the inner panel with the inner panel that goes on the back, which is uh, still outside. Um, I'm thinking if I have time to do a little bit of pinstriping on the dashboard with the markers, of course. Um, the, this is still not glued in. This is uh, another portion that I want to fix. I want to figure out how to do the opening and closing of the hood. Um, the hood on the bottom I am also working I still need to finish all these mirror type things that are gonna go on those uh, six squares uh, these both uh, the center ones have a Mayan art so it's gonna be displayed when the hood opens jumping on the engine bay I still need to glue the brake booster the master cylinder I have to finish detailing the inside of the, the head all the rocker arms uh, the radiator is just sitting right now it's not glued I have to make the the belt the accessories belt I have to do the battery uh, the battery I have here so I still need to throw it in there do the cables full detail on the engine with wiring carburetor linkage uh, the radiator hoses everything that has to do with the with, uh, engine. I'm working on, on the front as well. Um, there's a lot of work. All these parts still have to go inside. Uh, mufflers, the, the tires are still not 100% positioned. Um, the chassis is somewhat installed. So we still have the, the play in and out of the suspension. Um, I still I. I think I still need to adjust the tires since now they're not sitting all the way in. I have to figure out why. Uh, again, there's so many variables and things that I'm doing that it's a little harder to keep track. Um, the paint overall is done. I'm just missing the tail uh, right on this whole section on the back. It's still silver, so I'm going to continue these patterns to the t to the bottom. And that's it. Then the two bumpers are going to be completely chromed. Uh, I'm still going to chrome the center uh, grill and uh, outside the, the lights or the vessels. I'm going to do uh, like this uh, metal um, engraving. So still a lot to do. I am again a little nervous. But uh, I am on it. I need to go rest right now. I'm tired. I have to work. It's uh, almost 3 a.m. So I will continue with this. I'm running out of time again. So I'm not giving up. But this is going to be tough. All right, you guys. Uh, I'll update you in a bit. So um, I decided to add uh, the first layer of uh, clear. So this is uh, 2K. It's drying. This is part of the back half of the body. 
and then we have a hood door front clip and the other door is down here so I'm waiting for these to completely dry I am sure I'm gonna have to give it a a couple of days I don't want any surprises by this thing not completely curing so I will definitely give it a couple of days until I can start uh, wet sanding it and and polishing them so I am going to go back to the engine which uh, there's still a lot of work to do on engine suspension the bottom uh, uh, the chassis and all the bottom accessories uh, tires and all that stuff so I'm gonna let these guys rest this is why I was rushing to get everything finished here that way I could clear coat it because this is gonna take a while so while these you know cures I can go ahead and and work with the rest of the car all right guys we'll be back this is um, the body so as you can see the first coat of uh, 2k is already in so I'm giving it a little bit of a sunbathe sun treatment so they can um, so it can harden a little bit uh, a little bit more so that's that one and on this side we have the front part we have the hood front bumper the rear bumper I'm still messing with it and front clip and the two doors okay so um, this is the dummy body remember this is not the real one the other one is drying right now I will show you what's going on what I'm doing with this um, I am testing how the suspension works and I noticed that the front tire now because I added the disc brake it has microscopic uh, like thickness so now it pushed the, the tire out now it's hitting right at the edge of the fender so good thing I caught that I'm going to have to remove the inner section of the of the wheel and then shave it from the inside that way the, the tire can go deeper so that's one error that I'm seeing um, I already glued everything that goes inside the trunk remember the strings and everything that holds the suspension when it extends so it's already uh, in there so pretty much the whole undercarriage is almost ready once everything's set up and in place I'm going to continue with the brake lines and, and all that stuff I have to be very very strategic on where I do it that way when I put the suspension in and out I don't break those lines which is gonna be a little tricky you know uh, at any show that I that I take this car to I want to be able to extend the car up and to bring it back in so I have to be very careful on where I locate all that stuff the interior is all finished except for the for the sides which uh, once the actual body goes inside I can I'm gonna be able to throw in the side panels I have to paint these two little things uh, they look stupid but they actually have uh, magnets and these magnets go on the bottom of the body and that's what it uh, that's what's gonna hold the arms when they extend down I will show you that in a little bit and now I'm gonna show you the outside um, well my parts are kinda like getting a sun treatment right now what's up you guys uh, I'm back so it's uh, May the 1st and it's 6 a.m. I'm getting ready to go to work and I'll show you guys a little bit of the progress until today. Um, today's Monday. We are going to be leaving on Thursday for the show. Thursday the, the, the 4th. So definitely we're going to miss the first day. But um, that's the only way to do it right now. It's so many things to do. The car's not done yet. Um, I think I'm gonna be right on point. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I'll show you right now what's going on. Um, I bought a base from uh, Amazon, one of those rotating things with a mirror, but I still have to create like a little attachment on the back 
where it's gonna hold the pin so the car can stay on the upright position. Uh, the previous magnet idea, not only it was gonna be too bulky, but it run into the risk of the magnets, you know, uh, letting the car go and the car slamming. So I said, no, I don't think that's gonna be a, a good idea, especially for a rotating uh, base. So I'll show you guys what, what we are up to right now. But again, it's uh, May the 1st. It's 6 a.m. I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm fucking tired. I went to sleep very late yesterday working on the car. These weeks are, these weeks, I'm sorry, yeah, these past weeks, but these days um, are going to be a little tough. I, I hope I can get this thing going. All right, you guys, I'll show you right now. So here it is. I always cover my models so dust doesn't attack them. <laughs> They're always uh, getting all messed up with uh, with the dust. And this is it. This thing is working. Um, I still have a few uh, little details to go around. I installed the PE. Um, the hood has to be attached. It's just on and off. And actually, I wanted to show you this. So two things. This one. So this is the base. Uh, the actual piece. You see this cut here? It matches uh, this pin or this hole. Actually, it's like a sleeve. It goes across all the way on the bottom. So this is going to hold a rod sticking up. And then the car has a tube JB welded to the whole trunk so it can hold uh, all of the car's weight when it's on the upright diagonal position this is how these will be attached of course this will be painted uh, today when i come back i gotta work on this make it look nice paint it and then it's gonna be jb welded here uh, the reason why is jb weld so it can hold the weight of the car and it doesn't run into any risk of dropping or breaking or, or anything and the second thing, uh, on my trip to Guatemala, I think two years ago, I got this thinking about this car. This is a actual Mayan, no, it's not a, a, a legit <laughs> Mayan uh, art, or I'm sorry, uh, like a piece of real Mayan anything. But this is made in Guatemala, kind of like resembling the Mayan stuff. It's kind of like this, you know, souvenir that you can take. But I saw it and I was like, hell yeah, this looks so freaking cool. And it kind of like matches the car. If I have enough time, which I doubt it, I'm going to paint it, uh, airbrush it, and kind of like match the car. So it's going to be displaying here next to the car. This is a base I made with, well, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, TIG welding. I used to TIG weld, and this is one of my last art pieces that I made with TIG weld motorcycle car parts everything but so that's what's gonna be next to the to the car and um, I will keep you posted I'll talk to you guys in a bit all right take care so again today's uh, Monday the first May the first I have to I went and buy some JB weld I am working on the part that uh, holds the car while it's on the upright position on the diagonal as if it was hopping so I am going to start working on that I need to really finish between today and tomorrow and then uh, polish the, the details like take care of the very last things uh, among those days that'll be Wednesday we're planning on traveling Thursday night but um, again, as part of this whole um, documentary that I'm actually building for you guys, you'll see part of the travel, part of uh, uh, getting everything ready. I'll show you the other models that I'm going to take with me. Uh, most of, well, a lot of you already know my Opel truck and the uh, tow truck, the Mercedes van. So I'm going to take those two as well, along with the uh, Catalina Lowrider. So um, let's get to work.